if a compiler is using an ambiguous context-free grammar for its parsing, then for the same source code, it might produce two different target codes at two different instances, which is obviously not desirable as the two target codes produced from the same source code might produce totally different results. So what we meant by an ambiguous context-free grammar? A uh, grammar is ambiguous if given an input string, it produces two different leftmost derivations for that input string. So two leftmost derivations. This is equivalent to saying that for a given input string, the grammar produces two rightmost derivations. Two rightmost derivations. And this is equivalent to that for a given string, we may create two different parse trees. However, if for a given string and a context-free grammar, you can produce one leftmost derivation and one rightmost derivation, then this is not sufficient to show that that grammar is ambiguous. It is because every parse tree has one leftmost derivation and one rightmost derivation. So basically you might be creating a single parse tree which is not sufficient to show that a given grammar is ambiguous for a given string. Also note that a grammar might not be ambiguous for all the input strings. It might be ambiguous for some specific subset of strings. Here I have written a context-free grammar which is ambiguous and also I have written an input string and we have to show that if this context-free grammar is ambiguous for this input string. To that end I will create two leftmost derivations of that input string and also will create two different parse trees. You can create two rightmost derivations also for this input string. I start from my star symbol and then I have to choose every time the leftmost non-terminal and I can replace it with the right hand side of that terminal. In this case, I have only one non-terminal, so I can replace it with any of those protections. I replace it with this protection, so. And then I have to replace the leftmost non-terminal because this is a leftmost derivation. So I have to replace this one. In order to produce this input string, I replace this with id. Then I replace this e with e times e. So id plus e times e. Note that this was my leftmost non-terminal. So I'm still following leftmost derivation. This was terminal, so this I can't replace, but this was my leftmost non-terminal. And I have replaced this leftmost non-terminal with this protection. Finally, I replace this E with ID. And this E with ID.
So I have started from the start symbol and I have reached to my input string. And while doing that, I have always replaced the leftmost non terminal with the right hand side of our production. So this is my one leftmost derivation for this input string and this context free grammar. If this grammar is ambiguous, then I have to create another leftmost derivation. Let's do that. So now I start with from the star symbol and I replace this star symbol with E times E. I have to make sure that I'm replacing the leftmost non-terminals. Now I replace this with production E plus E and this I write as it is. Now I replace this with ID I replace next E with ID and finally I replace the last E with ID. So this is also our leftmost derivation and both derivations drive to the same should be id here and both derivations drive to the same input string so that's why this context free grammar is ambiguous we can also create pass tree of both of those derivations and we are sure that this derivation will create two different pass trees if we have one leftmost derivation and one rightmost derivation then those derivations may or may not produce two different pass trees. Those derivations might produce the same pass tree. So let's create pass tree of these derivations. So let's call it my derivation one and let's call this my derivation two. So I first create pass tree for my derivation one. I start from the input symbol E, then I replace this E with E plus E, then I replace this E with ID and then I replace this E with E times E and then I replace that E with ID so and the last E also with ID. So this is my one parse tree for this leftmost derivation. Now let's create another parse tree for the second leftmost derivation. I once again start from E and I replace this E from E times E. And then I replace this E with E plus E. Now I replace all of those E's with ID's one by one. So ID, ID and ID. Now please note that, that these two pass trees, if used by a uh, same code are problematic because here we are giving multiplication higher precedence over plus. So, my result here will be different and here we are giving plus more precedence over multiplication. So if I have 2 plus 3 times 5 then this pass tree will first do the multiplication creating result of 2 plus 15 and then it will do the addition and my final result will be 70. And with this pass tree, I will first do the addition. So once again, I have two plus three times five. So I will first do the addition. So it will become 
5 times 5 and then I will do the multiplication and my result will be 25. Obviously both of them cannot be correct so this is a problem. Now the question should be asked how to solve this problem. We can obviously make this context free grammar non-ambiguous by a careful look. However, the making an arbitrary context free grammar unambiguous using an algorithm is not possible because this problem is undecidable. That means we can never develop an algorithm that takes an arbitrary context free grammar and make it unambiguous. So what's the solution? So the solution is that different parsers allows us to specify precedences and associativities. For example, in this case, a parsing tool might provide us some other mechanism to specify that multiplication has higher precedence over addition. And we might use the same ambiguous grammar, but our result might end up being correct. So that is it for this video. I hope that you will be able to understand how to show that a given grammar is ambiguous and you will be able to do that question in your upcoming test. See you in the next video. Bye.